this video is to go over CSG's universal application process. Um, we're going to be going over start to finish so you can understand how the process works. Um, if you're familiar with our tools, you'll be um, you'll be you'll notice this screen in front of me. Um, this is the results page of a quote we ran with our system. And if you wanted to go ahead as the agent to submit an application to a company, rather than having to go through a third party or an independent carrier application process, you can now do so right through our system. So I go went ahead and ran a quote for us here, and I'm going to go ahead and click apply now. Um, and what it's doing after I click apply now is it's validating me as an agent. It's taking the writing number and the agent information that I've provided. And it's making sure that yes, I'm licensed with this insurance carrier and B, I'm licensed in this state to submit business to this insurance carrier. And so it'll provide me my underwriting agent information to make sure that uh, me as the agent, I have the right information here before I submit this. So um, commissions are paid and, and the um, validation of the app occurs properly. It also carries over all the quote information price per month, the gender, the age, and the tobacco status of the information that I typed in or, or selected before I ran the quote. It also then has me select an underwriting type. And for demo purposes, we're going to do full underwriting. But if I were to select open enrollment or guaranteed issue, all the logic has been built into the system. So if I were to select guaranteed issue, it would have me skip questions about health and things like that. Or if I was to select guaranteed issue, but it really wasn't a guaranteed issue case, the system will notify me and I have to slip, sl switch over to open enrollment or full underwritten. And so all the logic's been built in. You as the agent um, or an agent cannot uh, screw this up um, in, in terms of the type of underwriting type or, or making sure all questions in the application is submitted in good standing. So we'll click fully underwritten here and we'll click continue. And the, really the purpose of this video is to make sure and understand how the process works start to finish. Here is our first section, is our applicant information. You can see kind of all the different sections associated with the application process. And this is the same type of order and process for regardless of the company. We really want this to be universal application, one process for every company. Certain companies maybe ask different questions and that's okay. We want the process to complete the application to be the same regardless of the carrier that you selected to go ahead and submit an application for. So it's pulled over information for us. We've selected um, our effective date, um, which is just going to be today's date. It'll default to today's date. You can adjust that accordingly, and the price will adjust accordingly based upon the effective date you've selected. We've got plan F. We'll go ahead and type in some information here. Now, it will have, we'll have a select our age. If we were to select, say, an age that is not consistent or beta date of birth that is not consistent with the age, it will have that updated for us. Um, so you can see, um, because I typed in 57, it's actually 61 instead of 60. So we'll go back down and update it so that we are age 70. And you can see that this will update automatically. So this will constantly be updating, making sure um, that um, we're, we're properly typing in the correct information. Height and weight, again, if, if, if the company has certain height or weight requirements that you're outside of, and the rate is going to be adjusted associated with that information. Um, it will update accordingly as well. Let's so go to household discount. This will does allow for um, dual applicants or dual enrollments if, if, a, if an agent's dealing with a, a, a husband and wife um, associated with the application. We're going to go ahead and select no, but that is a possibility. If you do want to submit two applications at one time, um, you can certainly do that here on the platform by just clicking yes and entering that applicant B's information in there. So now I'll go over to our Medicare information. And you can see as we as we complete certain sections of the app, it goes to a green check mark. If I say I went on to a different section or I tried to submit the application and there was a yellow exclamation point associated with that, that means that we haven't done, we haven't filled out the all points of the application on there and we have to do so before we submit it. Or based upon how we're answering certain questions, it will provide us a notification letting us know that um, the application can't be submitted due to X, Y, and Z reason. And I'll show you that here as we get to the health questions. Let's go ahead and type in a fake social security number. Um, we are not applying in an open enrollment period. And we did not enroll in Part B in the next six months. The reason it asks those questions, obviously, it's pertinent to the information that we require of the app. But if we were applying within six months of our age, it would then let us know and notify us that we need to switch over to a guaranteed issue or an open enrollment plan 
um, because it's a different kind of app associated with the questions that are those that are answered. So we'll go ahead and press previous or existing coverage information. I was going to ask certain questions like, um, are you covered under medical assistance or Medicaid program? We are not. Do you have another Medicare supplement insurance or in force? We'll say we don't. Um, have you had coverage on any of Medicare plan, Part A or B, within the last 63 days? Medicare Advantage plan or Medicare HMO? We'll say no. Um, and if we have had any group coverage in the last 63 days, and we'll say no to that as well. So we'll start selecting no to these. You'll, again, you'll see this start to update. So you can see we pressed yes here. So it's going to provide a notification here that it may not be issued because we've answered yes to one of the to one of the um, health questions, and so we're notified associated with answering one of those questions yes. And so depending on how you answer any of this, certain companies will let you submit the application but just notify you of the cancellation, and some insurance companies won't even let you submit the app based upon how you answer certain questions. So that's going to be company specific, but again, the process to filling out the app is it needs to push to a higher tier. Certain companies have different rating classes. It will do so automatically and notify you of the change. But it won't let us continue until all the questions have been answered. So it looks like we have, and we'll go ahead and press continue, and we're going to go now to medication information. So what's going to ask is, is if we've been taking medication, if we have, we'll click yes. Um, and then it'll have us enter the information or the medications that we're in. Um, if we click no, it'll have us continue to the next medication period. Um, an important piece is if you enter a medication that or a dosage that is outside the realm of um, what that company will actually underwrite or what that company will issue, again, you'll be notified. You'll get a notification letting you know um, that certain um, how you've answered the drug information um, it may cause an issue with getting the policy actually approved. So we'll click no for that. We're not taking any medications. We'll now move over to method of payment. So we, will, we will not print it for wet signature. You can print it for wet signature if you want. If you just wanted to print the application off in a fillable PDF, it will allow you to do that. We will select automatic bank withdrawal. If the company allows a check payment, it will have you do that. We'll just do an automatic bank withdrawal on the first. It is going to be a checking account. We'll go ahead and enter in a fake routing number. That's all the information I need there. Here is where the producer, the agent, me as the agent, um, needs to complete um, my information that the company will require. Again, certain companies can request different information, um, but it, it's it's in it, it, the, the importance is to making sure that everything that would be required of a regular electronic application process has been included in this system. So I'm going to deliver the policy to the applicant. I've accurately recorded the application to the consumer. Uh, and I certify I've interviewed the proposed applicant. I don't have any notes to underwriting. If I did, I could put it in there. If I have any materials to, to upload, maybe they get a notice of termination from their current health uh, or employer coverage, um, or they're getting terminated, their Medicare Advantage is getting terminated in their area. You can choose to upload those files here. The last piece is I'm going to verify this application. So we've done all the sections. I've completed my producer section. I'm now going to verify this application. And so here all is the verification. Here's all the different sections. It'll say uh, green complete, but I can kind of scroll through and make sure everything I've put in here is accurate and, and correct information. I'll then choose to lock this application. I agree. So I'll say I am in the same physical location as my client. It will not let you continue until you've opened up all those documents. And we're going to do um, applicant is going to provide the identifying information. I have read. Applicant will provide the mother's maiden name and the last four of the social is the verification. Apply the electronic signature. I can choose to, uh, if a company allows the email signature link. So if you rather just do an email, or if a company allows voice signature, you can do so. With those different signature types. If I select email, I can send the applicant an email um, with uh, a varying code that they can then sign and sign that application. If it's voice verification, to give that uh, individual a phone number to call to voice verify the application. So all those different signature requirements or requests are all available on there. Zip. 
apply a signature, apply the e-signature, and I'll go ahead and click sign application. And that will complete the application process. You'll get a notification that it's been submitted.